everybody in here, sitting here outside in front of the chicken yard, not having coffee, having whatever this stuff is. My stomach is a little upset, so I'm going to avoid caffeine for a few days and see if that takes care of it, but, um, what? Good boy, Romeo. Whew. That hawk was going after a red bird. I didn't catch that on film. It scared the hell out of me. So what was going on with that hawk situation? I don't know if you can see a branch that's kind of like goes like that. Well, there was like a kerfuffle right in that area of brush behind that little tree that has the branch that goes this way. And then I saw the hawk and I saw the red bird. It was going after a red bird. And the red bird kind of ended up perching. It's hard to see. Right, right there. And the hawk was right there next to it and with its back to me. It was perched on the same limb with its back to me. It was so close, you guys. And then the red bird flew off. And then the hawk went, oh, I don't know, one of these trees over here and just kind of perched there and then I don't know if it saw the red bird flying this way but it went back after another bird towards this way and flew off that way but it was literally right there right past that barrier I couldn't believe it yeah so these chickens no I don't think we're gonna be doing the free-ranging thing anymore I'm just gonna bring greens and worms and bugs in for them and uh, Really, only one of the leghorns tries to fly out, and I'm usually able to get her back in. But the rest of them seem content to be in the yard, so that's what we're going to do. Eventually, I will cover the top of this somehow, some way. But for now, they're, they're doing just fine. Let's see how Miss Press is doing. Oops. Quiet. Quiet, quiet. Yeah. Can you see her? She's still sitting in there. This filing cabinet is such a mess. It's got rust all over it. But she's been eating and drinking, I can tell. She is faithfully sitting on those eggs. You may be wondering what's going on here. Well, I had to put this up. It's it's not a fence. It's a barrier, basically. Um, because Papa, he was getting himself all wrapped around these, these particular fence posts. And he was going up into the woods right there. And doing his business back there. And he was getting all you know, tied up in the, um, you know, the, the brush and whatnot. And I had to get up 50 million times and go untangle him. And he's not supposed to be jumping and climbing anyhow. So I've just kind of laid these up against here just so that to discourage him from going up this way. He can go out that way. He can go out that way. He can go out this way. Um, but I just don't want him hopping up on that hill and getting all tangled up. We had some pretty freaky weather here a couple days ago. Happened on Saturday and it spawned a couple tornadoes very close by. I was actually terrified. So unfortunately I didn't have my camera out. I wasn't filming. I was just, well first of all I have to backtrack a little bit. Um, Saturday morning I woke up and I couldn't walk. I could not get out of bed. Um, I tried to get out of bed. My right knee failed. It completely failed on me and it buckled. It didn't buckle like bending this way. It buckled like it was going to go against the joint. I don't know, hyper, hyper extended or whatever. Um, and it was excruciating pain. The worst pain I've ever had in my life. And so I just basically sat back down in bed and waited until I could support my weight on my knee. Um, so I was able to, I mean, it was like a couple hours and here I am worried because I remembered that I had forgot to fill the bucket that I put in you know, the little tub for the chicken's water that I put inside the van with them. And I knew that I had to get up early because I knew the storm was coming. I needed to take care of that. So, because they were going to be in the van and they needed their water. Um, but I couldn't go out and do it. So if I had <laughs> remembered to do, do the water thing last night, I wouldn't have been so worried and they would have been fine. But I, it took a couple hours before I could stand up and walk because I didn't have a cane or assistive device or anything 
with me, but I do now. <laughs> Cody made me that walking stick, and that's what I used. Um, so I had to wait a couple hours before I could get up, and the one thing that saved me is I remembered that a subscriber had sent me a knee brace. I was able to locate that in one of the bins underneath the bed, so I didn't have to go far to find it, and I found it, and I put it on. Also, uh, I think Donna, I think it was Donna that sent me the pain patches that, you know, I don't know, it's kind of like icy hot maybe, I'm not sure, but you put it over the joint. I put that on first, then I put the knee brace on, and then I was able to stand up and support my weight without it being just the most awful pain I've ever had in my life. And so I got my cane, <laughs> I went out, and it was really hard getting over the chicken fence because I unlatch it, you know, and I have to like step over it. But I was able to get them water and, um, you know, put it up there. Um, at that point during the day, the weather hadn't hit here yet. Um, so there was a lull in the rain. It had been raining all night and it had just stopped for a little while, just long enough for me to get out and do that. And so the chickens were okay. Um, and they're going crazy over there right now. Um, anyhow, uh, so that was really awful. I was able to get some naproxen in me, two, two tablets right away. And a couple hours later, I was starting to feel better. I noticed, though, that if I just sat and did nothing for the rest of the day, um, it just hurt more. So I got up. I grabbed my walking stick and I hobbled around my property and I went and got worms for the chickens. Um, I got them greens for their yard and um, it was hard and it was painful, but I did it and I ended up feeling better as a result of having done that. So yeah, um, I don't think this particular situation in my knee is rheumatoid arthritis. I actually think it's osteoarthritis. So. Um, it's getting to the point where I got to see a doctor about this because that actually scared the heck out of me because I was incapacitated. I could not walk on that knee. It wouldn't support my weight. It wouldn't, it, it would buckle underneath of me, you know, and I know you've heard people say that, but, um, it's kind of scary when that happens and it kind of reduces your confidence to be able to get up and do things later on. The good thing is, um, and I'm going to talk to you in a minute about the storms here. Um, the good thing is, is the day after I started feeling that I was able to get out of bed. I didn't need to put on the brace. I didn't even need to take naproxen. So after the weather changed, my joints feel better. And um, I'm really glad for that. Anyhow, some pretty bad storms came through here. So let's talk about that for a little bit. So when the first storm came that spawned a tornado, it was looked completely different out here, of course. It was raining really hard, and it, there was a lot of wind, and the skies were dark. Just, you see that tree line there? That's all Mr. Lucas' property. Just beyond that, I saw a wall cloud, and if you've ever seen a wall cloud, you'll never forget it. Um, I used to see them quite a bit in, in Ohio because I lived in an area that was very close to a city that got lots of tornadoes. And so the wall cloud, it was lighter here and then it was like a line and it was blackness up above and then right in this area it was it looked so close you could see some clouds that were closer down to the ground that were kind of moving in this direction and so it just went basically all the way across that tree line and up above it was just completely black and you could just see the clouds moving kind of it was weird. Some of the clouds were moving and some of them were stationary. So this, this is a north heading road right here. Mr. Lucas lives on the east side. So that makes sense that that's where the tornado started out. Um, it didn't touch down in our area. However, it did touch down um, it's just a few miles away, just kind of, I think about five miles southwest of Lexington, which is over there, okay? It's like basically east over there, east and a little bit north. So the tornado, the first one started here and it just kept going that way. So it missed us. It didn't touch down here. A little bit later on that night, another storm started forming. And uh, before I saw this notice, I saw another one. About five minutes before this, I saw a notice that said that there was a storm where a tornado had formed and it was hover hovering over Chickasaw State Park. 
which is very close to me. It's where I used to go to get water. And it said it was heading, you know, northeast, basically directly towards me, Henderson, Tennessee, and uh, moving pretty quickly, 50 miles per hour. So I was absolutely terrified, you guys. I thought, oh my gosh, it, it's going to get me. It's going to get me. And I'm trying to think of plans of what I'm going to do. And my knee was hurting and I knew I couldn't run. But, you know, then I saw this notice and it said that um, a storm had been spotted and it spawned a tornado right over Henderson, Tennessee, not Henderson County, but Hender Henderson, Tennessee and Chester County. So, of course, I'm thinking I'm going to die. I'm going to die. But then a little bit later, I saw this and it informed us that the storm had gone a little bit east of us. And uh, again, a tornado had been spotted on radar, and I don't know if it touched down in Jass Creek. It didn't touch down in Henderson, Tennessee. It basically just sailed right over us. So there was a tornado in the sky, but it didn't come down onto my property. Thank the Lord. I tell you what, Mr. Lucas said that, that the Lord takes care of old people and fools. Well, I think I qualify for both. <laughs> Wiggle, Papa. Anyway, so I was thinking what I was going to do. Um, I kept like looking out my door and listening to see if I could hear that classic freight train sound. And I didn't hear it, but I figured if, if I start hearing those sounds, I've got seconds, maybe less. So my plan was to get Papa on his leash and take him down into the lowest part of my property, which is in the water, in that creek bed that was swollen with water. It was The water was just like, oh my gosh, it was moving so fast. But that's what I was going to do. There's a couple tree trunks down there that I could have held on to. And I would have just held on to Papa and hope for the best. So that's what my plan was because I have I had nowhere else to go. And, of course, it was complicated by the fact that my knee was killing me. Um, so I was really afraid, you guys. I mean, I was just terrified and Papa was pensive. But it didn't touch down. It didn't touch down, so we are okay. One of the first things that fell was this limb right here and that's part of it that's part of it I don't know if that was part of it um, it might be you know a different one but um, it fell off of let's see where did it fall off of oh up here way up there I don't know if you can see that right there it just cracked and came crashing down and uh, yeah so that happened Lovely. Well, I can saw it up. That's not a big deal. And that came down. I got a whole bunch of stuff like this, just smaller branches that have come down. Which, you know what, that's not a big deal because then I can just take them with my mini chainsaw, one or the other, and, you know, cut them up and burn them in fire. All of this came down. Uh, that must have been what I heard cracking over in this distance. Yep, all those limbs, all of this stuff is new I'm assuming yeah it came off of this tree here so that's all got to be taken care of fun I've tried to reach out to Lena at Red Road Homestead because she lives she lives in the area where I think the tornado touched down and she hasn't gotten back with me yet so I'm saying prayers that everything is okay with her um, we're okay here and today it's a much better day my knee is not hurting today just it may be a teeny bit, but I can walk on it. Don't need the brace. So, yeah, some excitement. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.